I'm saying, sir. I'm sorry, I just got here. You just uh, got here? Thrown in. Oh, all right, huh? What, 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 are we talking what, what were you talking about? We're talking about the shed blood of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about that, that, that sinners can find peace at the foot of Jesus Christ's cross. That's what I'm talking about. I'm trying to warn people. Let me see, do you find yourself on this hit list? I bet you're a fornicator. I am. You're a fornicator, uh, huh? Uh, the Old Testament also says that... Uh, Shellfish is a sin, so you should be... What's that? Shellfish is a sin. Okay, the Old Testament... Here, here. Yes. What, what's that? You should be over at Joe's Crab Shack. No, just so I don't have to be at Joe's Crab Shack. See what happens? I love dr drunken They're sinners, so Drunken sinners walk right up to me. Yeah. That's the beauty of the gospel of Jesus Christ, is that drunken sinners walk right up to me, and they embarrass themselves in the public arena. Yes. So that, that's what happens. Yes. Because you say, you, you say that, that there's no shellfish, but you know what? That, that was for the Jews. You see this Bible... This Bible, this Bible is a Jewish book. What? No. Here, hold on. Can I explain? Are, are you intelligent? Are you coherent enough for me to explain? Okay, fantastic. What's your name, sir? Andrew. Andrew, my name's Paul. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Pleasure to meet you. All right. So, so when we talk about shellfish, we can, we can talk about linens and things like that. You know what? The Bible says that you can't mix the, the, the mother's meat with, with the milk, you know? Or you can't eat pork. But I tell you today, because of Christ, it's okay to eat a double cheeseburger, okay? Sur surf and turf is, is, is okay because, you see, those things were given to God. Those things were given to the Jews to preserve them and to separate them from the other nations of the world because they were given God's law. Okay. They were given God's law. And also, they had all kinds of ceremonies that they had to do. The reason that they had these ceremonies to do was because they pointed to Christ. But once Christ came, he fulfilled the law of God. He fulfilled it in totality. He was a he was spotless lamb that was slain before the foundation of the earth. You see, the temple was rent. That's why we don't have any longer to do blood sacrifice. That's and why we, we don't have pork. to... What's that? And we can eat pork. And, and we can eat pork. Yes. But, I, but I tell you this, sir. Unless you repent, you'll perish. I tell you that with all sincerity. I repent and, and, all the time. What's that? I repent. You repent how? Hold on. I go to church. Hold on. I'll high five you over the cheeseburger. Uh, you go to church? Yes. But you stand out and say you're a fornicator? I am Let me talk to you for a minute. Are you a Christian? Yes. Let me talk to you for a second, Christian. Yes. Let me talk to you for a second, church goer. The Bible says this. And you know for, you know the book of Corinthians, right? Yes. Okay, you know 1 Corinthians, right? Yep. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Pay close attention, religious people. Pay close attention to what I'm about to say. You see, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 says, Fornicators will not inherit the kingdom of God. Be ye not deceived. That's what it says. What that's talking to is religious people, churchgoers. It was written to the Corinthian church, and Paul, Apostle Paul, under inspiration, said, if, a, if you're a fornicator, don't be deceived. You will not inherit the kingdom of God. You see, if you're sleeping out without having sex outside of marriage, don't be deceived. You will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's written to you too as well by application. Yes. That if you call yourself a Christian, if you call on the name of Jesus Christ, and you stand out in the marketplace like a drunk and mock the gospel and mock the preacher, you're not a Christian. You see, the Bible says this, we'll know a tree by its fruit. You see, a Bible says we'll know a tree by its fruit. And, and so we, we can judge righteous judgment. That's what the Bible says. It says judge righteous judgment. We can examine ourselves and see if we are in the faith. And as long as someone stands and mocks the preaching of the gospel where there are sinners to be heard, we know that this person is void of grace. And I tell you, and I encourage you to put down your weapons of warfare, repent and believe the gospel before it ever everlastingly too late. See what a lot of people think is that we have all the time in the world. I can go to church on Sunday. Go ahead. My God loves me. Your God loves you? Yes. What, 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 what God? What God do you serve? I'm sure, I'm sure your God loves you. Yep. See, now what he's done is he's violated the second commandment. It says, do not make a graven image. You see, but what many people do is they make an image of God in their minds that suits their sin. They make a God that suits their sin. They make a God that says, it's okay that I can fornicate. It's okay that I can be drunk. It's okay that I can mock the preaching. They make this God that excuses their sin. You see, but that, that's not God at all. That's definitely not the God of the Bible. Now that might be a God of your imagination. What's that? It's fun though. It yeah, is. Sin, sin is fun for a season. Sin is fun for a season. The Bible does say that. But you know what? But there's hell to pay on Judgment Day. 
Oh, yeah, you know what? Mockers will have their part in the lake of fire, Mel. And, and unless you, you repent, you'll perish. The What's that? What's that? The for, for, for the dead. Yeah. For the dead. You're quick to know everybody else's sin, but when we talk about fornication, your God, your God so, so loves you don't, for that. Don't, don't forget your, your God loves you for that, right? Don't forget right? Your God, your God loves you for fornication, doesn't he? And yeah, yeah, your God loves you for that. You know what? That, that, that's, that's sickening. That, that, that don't, don't, la don't label Christ. Don't take my God. Don't take the God of the Bible, his name, and use it in such a blasphemous manner because you're also guilty of that. To say that you have a God that winks at sin. You see, the Bible says this. God has appointed a day in which he will judge the earth in righteousness. That's what the Bible says, that God has appointed a day in which he will judge the earth in righteousness by this man that he has appointed, and that man is Christ Jesus. You see, the Bible says that uh, Jesus Christ is the way. He said that I am the truth, and he said that I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. There's no other way. A thief and a robber and a fornicator and a drunk can't come in from climbing over the wrong gate. They have to come in through the sheep gate. You see, the broad road, the, the broad road is wide, and there are many that find it, but the narrow road, Jesus said to strive to find the narrow road, and there are few that find it. Don't be deceived, people. Not everybody talking about heaven is going there. Not everybody talking about heaven is going there. There's many people that will say, Lord, Lord, did we not go to church on Sunday? And... and fornicated on Saturday, and, and, and they'll say, did, did, I, did I not say my prayers? Did I not repent all the time after i done this wickedness? And that this is what Jesus said. Jesus said, depart from me. I never knew you, you worker of lawlessness. Yeah, that, that, that's idolatry. Do you, have any, do you have anything intelligible to say? Do you have anything constructive to say, sir? How do you explain AIDS? What's that? How do you explain AIDS? How do I explain AIDS? AIDS. A AIDS. I'll tell you how I explain AIDS. The gentleman asked, how do you explain AIDS? Now a lot of radical preachers would say, hey, you know what AIDS is? It's, it's a, a death sentence pronounced on homosexuals. That's what AIDS is. But you know what? I'm not going to say that tonight. What I'm going to say is this. I'm going to say that sin entered into the world by one man. And by one man centered into the world, that we are all touched by it. Even the earth itself groans under the weight of sin. You see, even the earth itself groans under the weight of sin. So not only do we have AIDS, we have cancer, we have gonorrhea, we have syphilis. Those are things you can get from fornication, okay? Pay close attention, okay? You see, and so God's given, given us the institution of marriage to be holy. God's given us the institution of marriage to be sanctified, you see? If, if you're, you're with a man and a woman who have never been with anybody else, come together in the institution of marriage, they don't have to fear AIDS. You see, that they don't have to fear gonorrhea. They don't have to fear Unless syphilis. And you know what? You know what? To see sex like that. Sex like that is holy. Sex like that is pure. Sex like that is God honoring. But what you do, sir, as you call upon the name of Christ, you mock my God. You mock my God. And I wonder who your pastor is because your pastor needs to give you a good Bible spanking. That's what needs to happen. Your pastor needs to give you a good Bible spanking and remove you from his congregation. What about That's what he needs to happen. The body with What's that? What about marking the body? With what about marking the body with tattoos? That is forbidden. You know so well about the Bible. You yes. should know that, that fornicators will have their part in the lake of fire. Yes. You should know that yes. and pay close attention marking, to that fornicator. Marking the body is also What's that? forbidden. No, marking the body is not forbidden. Marking of the body for the dead is what the Bible said is forbidden. Twist not scripture lest you be like Satan. Don't get it twisted that, 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 you should, that marking the body for the dead is sin. Not just marking the body, not any old yes. kind of way, yes. specifically for the dead. The so, if you wanna, so, if you wanna, so if you want to ask me something, I'll tell you this. You see this here? This is a tattoo. You know what it says? Forever in my heart pops. You know when I got this tattoo? Yeah, yeah, you know what? Fornicator, you're gonna burn in the hot you're gonna burn in the hot hot hell. You know what? Watch your mouth, there's women present. You know what? Christian, you blasphemer. You know what? And so I got this tattoo. And this tattoo is sin. But here's one important thing. Here's one important thing. That that there's grace at the foot of the cross for all types of sin. This is the beauty of it all. Here's why I'm out here tonight, to let sinners know that there's grace at the foot of the cross, that in Christ Jesus, we can find healing. You see, that the Christ Jesus covers 
a multitude of sin. You see, I, I've repented of this, and now my body is scarred. But the Bible says this, that there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. You see, it, it won't be my righteousness that I stand before God with on judgment day. It, it, I'll come with the empty hand of faith. I'll come with the empty hand of faith. I won't say that I've worked or I've strived, or I've preached on a street corner, that I had my tattoo removed, or I've done all of this, but I'll say all I have is that I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. All I have is that I've been washed in the blood of Christ. You see, I'm telling, here, telling people tonight to look to Christ and live. Thank you, God bless. To look to Christ and live. To put down your weapons of warfare. Thank you. Put down your weapons of warfare. Put down your fornication, put down your drunkenness, and look to Christ and live. There's healing at the foot of the cross. <coughs> you see, but a lot of people, what they say is, preacher, what you're sa sa preaching sounds like hate. God's a loving God. God doesn't hate. Well, the Bible in Psalm 711 says that God is angry with the wicked every day. It, doesn't say, it says that God is angry with the wicked every day. Those who fornicate, those who smoke the wacky tobacco, those who spend their time getting drunk, the Bible says they will have their part in the lake of fire that burns with fire and brimstone for everlasting and everlasting. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that homosexuals and lesbians will perish in a hot, hot hell. That's what the Bible says. Those who glory themselves in all kinds of wickedness, the Bible says that on judgment day, they will perish. And I encourage you now to repent and believe the gospel before it is everlastingly too late. While you still have breath in your mouth, repent and believe the gospel.